Hi, I'm Paul Jones. I'm a Professor of Respiratory Medicine here in London at St George's University of London and I'm a chest physician but my main interest is in CPD and looking after patients like you. I've been to Asia a lot, uh, to Japan maybe 25 times. I'm doing some big studies in China that, and I've been to China maybe 50 times. I've been to all the countries in ASEAN. So I have quite a good understanding of the nature of CBD in the Asia Pacific region. CBD is a disease of the lungs that's mainly caused by cigarette smoking, but not entirely. And the main symptoms are cough and production of sputum and breathlessness. And it's the breathlessness that's the main problem. CBD affects a patient's quality of life in two main ways. First of all, coughing can disturb sleep and bringing up phlegm isn't socially very nice, but the biggest effect is causing breathlessness that limits patients' activity. And that goes from recreational activity and sport to essential activities of daily living. It's difficult to be precise because often the studies have been too small to give very exact answers. And if you look at the published studies, it varies a lot between very little to very many. But on average, it's probably about 1 in 17 of the population has got COPD. That's the whole adult population, not just older people. That's the whole adult population. So it is a common disease. And um, there have been studies done in Singapore and Korea, for example, that suggest it's about 6% of the population. In the West, the numbers look very similar. It's a worldwide problem. The pattern of it varies a little bit between Asia and the West, uh, even within Asia, between China and Japan. But overall, the prevalence is very similar across the world. I don't think there is a lot of difference in an Asian population and a Western population in terms of CBD. There are small differences. For example, in Japan, the pattern of CBD looked a bit different from mainland China, but by and large, the disease is the same across the world. It's important to understand that there's two components of CBD. One is damage to the airways and the other is damage to the lung tissues themselves. Between Japan and China, there's a difference in pattern. In Japan, it's more damage to the lung tissue, whereas in China, like in the West, it's a mixture of damage to the airways and damage to the lung tissue. And senior Japanese physicians think that in their working life, they have seen the pattern change from looking like that in the West and in China to being more like just damage to the lung tissue and they think it perhaps is due to a change in the pollution level. Yes, almost certainly, in two ways. One is that pollution probably increases the risk of CBD, but second is that CBD patients get what we call exacerbations, chest infections, and they are much commoner when there's a high level of pollution. So it has probably a short-term effect and also a long-term effect. That's a difficult question to answer because they are much better than they were at the turn of the century, but still CBD is not a curable condition. So we can improve the symptoms, improve the patient's breathlessness, enable them to be more active and still there is still room for improvement but the modern treatments last for much longer and are much more effective than 20 years ago so there have been very big step forward sadly no the treatments that we have are based on those that were identified in the last century but they are more effective and they're delivered better. Mo the most effective treatments are all inhaled and the newer inhalers are much better than the older ones. So these have been incremental gains, not very big step changes. But as I said, 
big difference compared to the turn of the century. Looking forward, there's some promising new drugs, perhaps being taken by tablet form rather than by inhalers, but they are still quite a long way away from uh, routine clinical practice. But it is important to remind people that although these aren't magic bullets, they are much better treatments than they used to be. The big problem is that patients don't use them as regularly as they should. If all the patients use all their medications regularly, they will feel a lot better. There are three simple things you need to know. One is if you're smoking, stop. It is never too late to stop smoking. The second is to use your medication regularly. And if it isn't working, tell your doctor because your doctor may be able to increase it. And the third one is keep active. Loss of activity and wasting muscles is a really big problem. And we saw that with COVID in the UK when people were locked down. It wasn't the COVID that was the problem for them. They didn't catch it, but their muscles just wasted away and they got unfit. And the patients knew that for themselves. So please, now COVID is gone, get out there and keep active.